Okay, here we go. Now, I'm setting up my canvas. Uh, here's an important thing. It's uh, lining up the palette at the same angle in the studio as your canvas. Palette is for mixing, uh, mixing colors, and the canvas, of course, is for painting on. If you have those at different angles, then it's possible that the lighting in the studio won't be accurate between the two. So you want to, this little trick in my book, just align your palette with your canvas. All right, now, so I'm mixing some colors, just setting up. I'm pouring a white into this blue, try to get kind of like a, that's a special blue, you know. And I'm going to just adhere it, sort of magnetize it to the easel. Um, not always the smartest technique, but it works for ease when you're working with uh, specific, specific colors over and over again. You might want to put those colors somewhere near. And yes, all the cans on my uh, workshop studio shelf there are upside down because I'm a wise ass. And uh, I just always leave them like that for no reason. Okay, so I've got my paints, I've got my canvas set up, I've got this nice square format. Okay, and I grab the biggest brush I can and I whack it into my custom blue and I just start dropping it in. Okay, so I don't know what I'm going for. I'm thinking sky or aquatic. So I'm not blending colors yet. I'm really literally just putting one color onto the canvas. So we have the primed canvas kind of look, and then I'm putting the blue on top. And you see it's starting to blend in with itself a little bit there. So I think I might add some white, kind of diffuse it a little bit. Oh, you see that I accidentally hit that green can that was in the uh, in front of the canvas. I didn't want the green yet, so I'm going to just knock back to that. Don't forget your undo. Undo's on the left hand controller, the Y button, just in case. Uh, at first I was sort of against these guys putting in an undo, but it turns out, of course, I use it a lot because I'm that kind of a person. But I think that the strongest painting comes from the least amount of undos, in theory, anyway. See, I keep hitting this can. I should just throw that can away, but whatever. Okay. Okay, now uh, I'm adjusting the brush settings because I want to mm, do some more blending. I try to go for some more subtle color changes. Uh, so I just turned down the mix. See, it's a little, not doing quite enough. Be careful when you jump back and forth between colors. If you use this color selector, uh, which is the right controller, I think it's A button, uh, and I grab that uh, color, and sometimes it can re sort of reset your, your settings. And uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just messing around. Not liking that. Undo. I'm trying to do like a little bit of like a glazing technique where I go in with a really light white roll, but it's just not going to work very well in this. I really like my organic background. I'm going to I'm going to keep. I'm going to toss this roller away. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's not getting the effect I like. Let's try this. So I select the white, and I'm going to go in. Might need to adjust a little bit. And I think there's going to be a lot of this kind of action going on for a while. The 
switch that back. Sometimes you want to go in with 100% thickness just for that opaque painted brush look. It's sort of like the infinite supply of paint that doesn't run out. But uh, usually I'm going for something a little bit in between with the mixing turned off, the thickness kind of high. And just for blending techniques, because this is a painting program, not so much a drawing program. And I think it's important that people kind of feel the difference when you're painting versus drawing. This is where you can just get wrapped up in this stuff for hours and hours. All right, so now I'm going to start adding a few other colors. Still trying to keep it analogous. So with this uh, aquatic color palette, I've kind of worked in. In terms of composition, I'm, I do tend to run things a little bit bottom heavy, which gives some gravity to the uh, composition. Like the, I'm not liking that upper upper left corner, which is weird, hard blue angle object up in there. I'm going to end up wiping that out. Right now, though, I'm focusing, just trying to add some visual interest to this area down here. I could go a lot faster and get a lot more messy, but I think for the sake of demonstration, uh, I'm just showing you how fun it is to work with these brushes. Now, one thing I want you to th think about these brushes are literally 3D objects, just like they are in real life. Uh, in, when you rotate the brush, when you push harder, when you pull back, you get different effects. And if you rotate it around, sometimes you'll find that you have a little bit of color left over from an earlier stroke. So you can actually get some blending off of one brush onto the canvas multiple colors with one stroke uh, and sometimes you just have to look at your brush and see what's on there so you see how I'm pretty consistently using the color selector uh, which just pulls the color right off the canvas I'm always doing this I want to keep my colors in a sort of a tight range and uh, not go too far off from uh, my palette so right now I'm just working with what I got. I don't. I'm not adding new colors. So basically, white, blue, and green, and little values of each in between. And getting lost in little details for no reason at this point. Uh, the problem is that I don't really have an idea where I'm going with this background. I have kind of an idea based on the sketch. I'm going to be doing kind of like a fighting figure in the middle of all this. And it might be aquatic, which is a little weird. Under, underwater fighting man. The original idea was to do kind of like a death skull samurai kind of thing. But uh, I'm not feeling that death vibe. A little bit too much too much death in the world, so let's do something a little bit more positive. <laughs> I often I struggle with the subject matter because you don't want to seem too contrived and doing too much fantasy or too much science fiction or too much superhero or whatever. That's why I like working with clients when they give me actual challenges with specific things. If not, 
if I just start doing free form, like kind of like what I'm doing here, then uh, I tend to fall back on some old ideas, you know, tropes, I guess they're called. I just uh, I don't go too deep into any kind of like subject. Sometimes I'm just doing a. Let's see if I can just paint a cool guy with a sword. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, so it's uh, still moving along with this background a little bit, so I'm going to talk about the next step, which will be adding in uh, the figure. I don't know how far I'm going to take it, but I think I'm going to just focus on adding one figure using a fairly uh, monochromatic sort of make like a high contrast in comparison to this uh, blue background, white background. So I'm going to think about adding this um, kind of a warrior. As soon as I kind of stop messing around with these little these slightly inane background details, which aren't really going to do much for the viewer, I guess. <laughs> but I love doing this stuff. No idea what I'm doing. I'm painting a little crab, I guess. It'll all get wiped out eventually. Okay, now I'm re notice I'm realigning that palette. It's at the same angle as the canvas, so I kind of am not getting different colors, different shades of the color. So what's on my palette is what's going to end up on the canvas. All right, so. Um, Here's where, if you're not an experienced painter, uh, you might want to have transferred in originally a sketch. Some people like to work with photographs. I'm going to just block this in. Um, I'm not doing a lot of gesture drawing here. I'm actually just trying to lay it in. The more experience you get with painting, the more confident you get. Uh, I say confidence without a lot of confidence, but sometimes I'll start painting something and then halfway through I'll completely change. I'll completely change what I'm doing because of some, some minor details that bug me. Uh, they can change the whole context of the painting. So here I'm just trying to work in the detail. I'm going for some kind of samurai armor looking guy. So I'm going to focus a lot on this armor. I like armor. Uh, I like the way it all comes together, sort of like a modular way of painting the human figure. A lot of artists use this block out system where they where they draw like a gesture line for the body and then they'll do a stick figure basically on top of that and then draw their guy in. But the more, more you paint the more you draw, the less you rely on those old comic book styles. You just start going in with the paint now. Already I kind of say, oh, I'm kind of regretting making this guy so small on the canvas. He looks a little bit pathetic. But we'll see what happens. It's not always about drawing things up close in detail. Okay, so here I'm just kind of, I'm literally sketching with the paintbrush. But I have a pretty studied idea of what I want. I kind of know armor. Uh, I've painted it several times in different different ways. And I know, I guess he's going to be in the water. I think he's in water, so we're not going to worry about feet. Feet are the bane of all artists. No one likes to do paint and do paint feet, so I'm not going to paint feet. Okay. The 
this could go on for a while, this kind of detail work. And now you can see I'm starting to add in more contrasted areas and details are coming in. Uh, some of the suggestions of the paint that I'm working with where I let the paint kind of give me ideas as I work into this um, because that's sort of the joy of painting that accidents happen. These happy accidents, you know, that, that can make really work for you. I think because of this uh, composition, when I first started sketching him out with the paints, he was looking kind of puny, so the armor is becoming sort of more massive. It's more like a tank-like guy. You can see when I, I jump back to look at the composition to see where sort of the weakness is. It's just such a bad composition, but Here we go. Had to take a little break. Now this is where sketching, uh, life drawing, doing life drawing, sometimes working with models, uh, went to art school, all that stuff. And you pick up a few tricks and shortcuts, uh, but mostly it comes down to practicing and actually doing when you can get to the point where you can render figures with paint without relying on like uh, pencil sketches or photos. It just comes down to like rote memory and then allowing for these accidents to kind of inform what you're going to do. If you look at like, I don't know, like fantasy artists, like Frank Frazetta, uh, often his backgrounds would imply things, and they would add they would add a lot of dynamic uh, action uh, or some sort of excitement. You know, you never know. It's it's like oh well, that looks this paintbrush looks like a sword. Oh, so it's like you start building a sword based on just the way the paints blended together at one point. So, you know, of this whole all this armor that uh, this guy has, it's sort of uh, starting to look worn and beat up, like kind of like he's coming out of a swamp. Add a little bit of his eyes and stuff in there. I don't want them to be too detailed. I want it to be kind of mysterious. He's looking kind of weird. He needs weapons or something. I don't know if I'm going to have him holding like a severed head. That's like, I don't know. I'm just not feeling too war-like lately. I literally just escaped from war, so I'm kind of trying to get away from that idea for a while, I guess. But I do like armor and creepy guys doing weird stuff. He needs a weapon. <laughs> okay. Always save. Save your work often.
So uh, a quick comment about how the tools I keep there. I usually keep the the pen and the brush up there, but I try to keep to just one or two tools most of the time. Too many tools can get in the way. Okay, here we go. Ooh. What the heck? I like it, but I don't know. Okay. I'm not going to undo it. I'm just going to let it sit and annoy me for a while.
Okay, starting to feel that I'm going to be done with this soon because I don't want to spend days and days on a demo kind of a painting. This was really just a quick jump for us to see how I approach painting. I'll do more demos, I think. I'll do more demonstrations of different techniques. This was just sort of like, I don't know, a general approach. Now from here, I could take this painting and I could put it into Photoshop, for example. Keep going. Um, let me just save it. <laughs> Don't need that. Uh, let's adjust this thing so we can see a little bit better. Yeah. It's putting down the signature, which I'm not a big fan of. It takes forever. Don't forget, save your work, save often, save with different file names if you are worried that you're going to screw something up and you need to go back a few steps. Uh, I didn't do that on this painting at all, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to throw it up on the big wall and take a look at it. It's okay. Yeah, the uh, final piece, more or less. Uh, yeah, this program's coming along. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really getting into the blending, and I'm really getting into the ability to control colors. And... Um, Getting away from sketches and photos is a good thing for all painters. I think it's worth mentioning that. Uh, but for beginner painters, number one advice is paint. Paint a lot. Don't be afraid to kind of throw work away. Don't invest hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on one painting. Uh, at this point, if you're just beginning, get into the get into the work and do five paintings a day instead of one painting a day or one painting a week you need to really just get in and make a mess and uh, don't show everyone all your paintings only show them your best <laughs> um, I've got paintings that I've done with painting VR that I wouldn't really want to show anyone else because either I was just messing around learning some technique or it was early on early days with it That's my advice. Oh, and save your work often. <laughs> That's the other important thing when it comes to this kind of media. Save your work. 
so your paintings don't crash and you lose them forever. I've been burned a few times by the, uh, the uh, headset running out of battery. It gets so wrapped up in the piece that I forget that I've actually got only 3% battery left on the Oculus. So uh, that, can, that can get you. All right, guys. Thanks for this. Thanks to Oisoy. Thanks to Vim and everyone for uh, this great program. And I'll do another demo painting soon, I hope. Ciao for now.